This is going to be Proverbs chapter 2. And we're going to talk about the Bible, the greatest search engine. Most of you are probably familiar with search engines like Google. However, many people forget about the greatest search engine that there is. That is the Holy Scriptures. There is an answer for all your problems of life in this book. So look at Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. In John twenty fifteen through 16, Mary Magdalene was weeping and seeking Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ spoke to her. That goes to show if you seek and weep for wisdom and for Jesus Christ, then he will speak to you. So it says, If thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, so all you have to do is cry and seek for these things, and the Lord's going to show up and give those things to you. The Pharisees seek to kill Jesus because the word wasn't in them. In John eight thirty seven, it says, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. So if you're not seeking the words, then his word won't be in you. And you will not have his best interests at heart because your flesh will rule. And it wants the opposite of what Jesus Christ wants. If you're truly seeking the word, then you want what Mary wanted. If you're not, then you want what the Pharisees want. The Pharisees don't want Jesus Christ. Mary wanted Jesus Christ. So, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding are found within the pages of the King James Bible. Now I'm going to show you, using Proverbs 2, 1 through 9, how to use the search engine of the Word of God. Number one, you have to receive everything it says. In Proverbs 2, 1, it says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. So it says, hide his commandments with you. Keep the sharp two-edged sword in your hand and stay ready. When it says, my son... That is Solomon speaking to his son, Rehoboam. However, we can also look at it as God talking to us. We are sons of God. He says, if thou wilt receive my words. You can have the Bible memorized and know all the facts, but it won't do you any good unless you receive it into your heart. In James 1.21, it says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul explains how the gospel is something the Corinthians received. You have to receive the free gift of salvation. And many people know what Jesus Christ did on the cross, but they have yet to receive him as their savior. So you may know much of the word of God. You may have it memorized, a lot of it, but do you receive it? If you have searched the scriptures, and you know the answer to some things, and you're still not doing what it says, then you didn't receive it. So that's number one, receive the words. People love to get something in the mail, especially since Amazon came along. They just get a good feeling when they open the door and there's a book or a new tool or something that the mail brought them. You open the door and you can take it in your house and then you use it. That's the way it should be with the Bible. God is sending you mail through his book. You open the door, you let it in, and you use it. So receive it. Number two, hide the words in your heart. My son, if thou wilt keep, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Many times I will search Google or another website for sermons or Bible studies and then months later, I'll go back and those sermons or, or studies have vanished. Maybe they couldn't afford to keep paying for the website or they decided to take the sermons down. So I began to download the sermons and put them on an MP3 disc or a flash drive 
and then I'll put them on my shelf. So if something or someone causes those sermons to vanish off the internet, I'll still have them on my shelf. So I have my own library of sermons to listen to. The same goes for what you should do with the words of God in your heart. You need to be memorizing scripture and meditating on scripture so that if anyone takes your book, then it's hidden in your heart. You're storing it inside. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hidden mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And number three, hold your ear towards the words. One of the Lord's favorite sayings was, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Proverbs 2 and verse 2 says, Thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Some people have their ears clogged with AirPods and Beats headphones, which is okay if you're letting the right things go in. But many Christians aren't letting the right things go in. They're like the children of Israel. They're just wandering around. They act no different than a moral lost person. He gets up. He goes to work every day. He feeds his family and his face. When he gets old, he retires and then he dies. He did absolutely nothing for God. He's 80 years old or better and knew nothing about the Bible. He didn't even know enough Bible to teach vacation Bible school. The average Christian is no different. They don't have their ear inclined to the Lord. It's pointed more towards the world. They've spent more time watching game shows than they have reading the Bible. More time watching the news than the Bible. More time on video games than the Bible. More time with football. You know, all these things. So incline thine ear unto wisdom. It's to the point to where if a man sees you reading your Bible, he says, are you a preacher? Because we know good and well the average Christian isn't reading anything but the newspaper or their news feed on Facebook. I've not been around too long, but I'd say 100 years ago it was a common thing to see the average layman reading the Bible at work. Proverbs 2, two so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. If you receive the words, then you're applying your heart to understanding. If you have understanding, then you're departing from evil. Job 28, 28, And unto a man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to, to depart from evil is understanding. Proverbs 2, 4, If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest, her for, searchest for her as for treasures, so you need to constantly be seeking the Bible, constantly learning something new every day. If I don't learn something new about the Bible every day, I get very discouraged. If you, you know, you need to get an appetite for the words of God. Get a concordance, look up a word, dig until you find something in the word of God. Read through the Bible with a certain topic on your mind until you have that topic figured out. I'm constantly searching for wisdom. And over the years, I've collected a large amount of books by Bible believers. I, I want to see what treasures they found. I searched for sermons by Bible believers. That way I can see what the Lord has shown them and write it in my Bible. Make your Bible a treasury of Bible knowledge. But next, you need to realize that you won't know it all. In Proverbs 2, 5, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So God shows us some of his knowledge in his book. However, there is infinite amount of information that we don't know about God and what he has made. There are things about the Lord that aren't written down. Ephesians 3, 8 says, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So there are things about the Lord that no search engine has the information about. Romans 11.33 Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. You couldn't find everything about God with any search engine. Romans 11.34 Who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Nobody. 
uh, Job 19, which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. So right now the Lord will show us a little bit. But don't let the fact that you can't figure everything out stop you from trying to figure out a little bit. Keep reading, studying, and praying, and one day we'll know all the answers. Because 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Next, realize who is giving you wisdom. When you're searching the scriptures and getting wisdom, realize who the one is that is giving you wisdom. You ain't getting it on your own. Proverbs 2, 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Did you know that any wisdom you have, the Lord is the one that gave it to you. Any knowledge you had, the Lord gave it to you. The Lord showed you how to use what you know. Even if everything you know about it, if, if everything you've ever learned, you think you learned it yourself, you're deceiving yourself. If you think you just learned it on your own, even though you learned it from another person, you still don't know the facts outside of God because God put that other person in your life. The Lord is the one who allowed that person to come into your life. He's the one that allowed you to be introduced to that Christian or teacher who taught you all the truths that you know. And then he's the one that showed that teacher all that they know. And he showed their teacher all that they know. So don't think for a second that you are wise just because you're you. James 1, 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Proverbs 2, 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So the Lord is a buckler. That is, he is your shield of protection. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. And this type of wisdom isn't for the wicked. It says it's for the righteous. The wicked have worldly wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1.20 says, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The wisdom of this world is mostly what you learn in school, in the newspaper, on Fox News, on The Ellen Show, on Dr. Phil. This is worldly wisdom that you don't get from the Bible. What you want is sound wisdom. In the book of James chapter 3, 13 through 17, it says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation with good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, you glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So if you have real wisdom, then you can teach others gently with long-suffering. This doesn't make them feel stupid or less of a person for asking you questions. This wisdom, if you have it, will cause you to treat everyone the same, fair and balanced. Proverbs 2, eight. He keepeth the paths of judgment, and preserveth the way of his saints. So the Lord keeps you from falling. He preserves you just like he preserves his word. You're on your way to heaven, just as sure as the Lord keeps his word. Titus 1.2 says, And hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Paul said, For I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Proverbs 2, nine. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity Yea, in every good path. If you think you are righteous, then you don't understand righteousness. 
Romans 10, 3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So if you know you're a sinner and that the reason you're going to heaven is because you have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then you're starting to understand. If you know that everything is judged by the book, then you'll understand judgment. We go through this life determining whether something is right or wrong based on the Bible. At the great white throne, men are judged by being compared to a perfect man, the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you know that the Bible is without partiality, and that God is no respecter of persons, and that you shouldn't be either, then you are beginning to understand equity. The Bible doesn't cut corners for anyone. No one is getting a pass. Every person has to come to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the only way. Everyone has to come to the Bible for the authority because no man should be the final authority. There is no man that's so good that he should be the authority. It's the Bible. Psalms 98, 9, Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. So Proverbs 2, 9, Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, in every good path. Not only does Google have a search engine, but they also have Google Maps that tells you where to go. But the Bible tells you every good path to go on. It's better than Google Maps or the Maps app on your iPhone. Proverbs 12, 28. And the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof there is no death.